Tark fans, got another edition of Chumming It Up coming your way today. I'm Jamison Carter, and this afternoon I'm joined by my man, NSU head tennis coach, Doug Nagel. My guy, how we doing over there? Good, man. You're making me feel special, my man and everything. You know, for, for Jamison to be calling me that, I, I, I feel special. Well, of course. I, I miss that that face, you know, and being able to hang out with you. So I've got, I've got to make you butter you up a little bit. <laughs> I miss being there, man, seeing you and seeing everybody. I really do. Hopefully soon. Of course. Well, I appreciate you taking the time to start start things off. You know, you're heading into, you know, just finished up your fourth season, heading into five, abbreviated fourth season. But, um... You've really taken the program from being a solid SSC program into one now that's nationally known on the cusp of a national championship. What would you say is really attributed to that? Um, wow, just hearing you say this is about my fourth season, I feel like one of the veterans now, you know? I was always one of the rookies there for a little while. I'm, uh, well, I am old, but now I'm one of the, the, the veteran coaches there. But um, I think uh, what has really helped us is the, um, the tough year that we had in our 2018 spring season all that adversity i think that adversity of that year really um helped set us up for 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 some success um that year it was a crazy year in 2018 we literally were playing some matches with four players uh college tennis you need at least six players in your lineup so we we were going into matches already down 2-0 before the match even started um and then you don't have a doubles team playing actually 3-0 because at the time it was a different scoring format so it, it was tough um it was a really, really tough year that year. I'm not going to keep harping on that year because we've had some good years. But I think that year really, really, um, really set us up. I know I'm repeating myself. But um, when we had four players like that, we had some really frustrating moments. And one of the things that was really tough about that is, in my eyes, on paper, we had the roster that year to win a national championship. And then next thing you know, you're out there, you're playing matches with four players. Then we're playing with five players. Somehow we even beat some of these schools with five players, some uh, some ranked teams even in our conference. Um, that year, I was even having doubts myself about, is this the right career for me? Do, what, what am I doing? You know, this is my second year here. I felt like we should have been doing so much better by this point. And I was questioning myself, should I get out of college tennis? But, you know, I decided I'm, I'm going to stick this out because I made some big goals for myself. One of the reasons why I came here to Nova is because I think we could win a national championship. And also, the kids that I brought in, I was telling them, you know, like if you come here, we have a chance to compete for a national title every year. Uh, I think we'll be there uh, at the end competing for it. And these kids that I brought in that year, you know, we we didn't. We weren't there. We were having all these crazy injuries and different things that were going on. Um, but we stuck it out. We uh, we showed patience. And then the next year we went 22 and five and we finished number six in the country. And that was at the time our best ranking ever tied for the most wins. Um, and then this past year, we uh, we finished number three in the country. It was a shortened season, but it's still something to be proud of because that's the, the highest ranking in our uh, in the program's history. And I'd like to think if this season finished, we would be there at the end um, in that final day, and we would have a shot to uh, to knock off Barry, whoever whoever it might be. You know, Barry's won it three years in a row. So I think that year in 2018 really really helped us um, get through it. I mean, just that. That, that perseverance is sticking with it, not giving up. So you mentioned being 13 and one this year, you know, before the season got cut short and you luckily you get most of your girls back next season. What's, what's the thoughts within the program with yourself of where that program is at, you know, and really what are, what are the ultimate goals now looking forward moving, knowing that you're right there on the cusp of that? Is, is that the ultimate goal now? It is. And you know, like, um, I think one of the reasons why the last two seasons, we've done so well is we kind of took a step back and we made our goals very vague instead of saying we want to beat this team or we want to finish with this ranking we want to win the ssc we want to win us we didn't say any of that we literally i know it sounds like the most cliche saying that all of us coaches use but we literally just focus on getting better each day and not looking past any team we just wanted to beat the team that was in front of us just prepare for them and then the results, the rankings, the accolades, all that would take care of itself. But like you said, we're we're looking so forward to this upcoming year because we went 13 and one, um, had a great trip out at the ITA National Indoors in Oklahoma, uh, almost beat Barry there, who won the whole thing. Uh, we beat the number three team in the country, Columbus, and a lot of it's due to just just focusing on what's what's ahead of us. And 
we have almost our entire team coming back. You know, it really hurts losing Sarah Wardenberg. She was a number, part of the number one doubles team in the country. That's always going to hurt you. But because of this COVID, we actually have Danny Obando coming back. We have uh, Bella, Isabella Lowry coming back now also. So, and we get Chantel uh, Nosevici back from, uh, she missed the entire season last year with a shoulder injury. She's going to be a top player for us. She had over 20 wins her first year here and she missed the entire year. So we finished number three in the country without her even playing. So we get her back and uh, we're working on getting one more player also. As soon as that's official, I can announce that. Um, but, but we'll see. But, um, you know, I'm just really, really looking forward. I know the girls are just, they want to finish what we started. I'm curious about kind of your process moving forward. You know, there's so many unknowns surrounding everyone in the world right now. But <laughs> you have to look at football, soccer, volleyball in the fall. That's that's their championship season. They've got to kind of start hot right out the gate. You guys being a, a spring championship sport, you know, are you maybe going to take things a little slower next fall? You know, be a little more lenient or are you going to continue with the same strategy, tactic, preseason schedule type of deal? We're going to work hard on and off the court. Obviously, I mean, that's what you have to do um, to have success. And it, it, it is, it's, it's going to be tough with so much unknowing, especially for us because our team is so international. You know, right now we have 10 players and two of them are American kids. So the other eight, they, they don't know even if they're going to be able to get back. Um, it, it, the, the good news is though, it's like all of the top teams are very international. Everybody's going to be dealing with the same situation. So, you know, just as you do on the court, you can only control what you can. That's the only thing that you really need to worry about. Um, the fall season will definitely look different. And I, I think we're going to touch on that in a minute as far as dates allowed. But, um, but we're going to work hard. We're going to play as many tournaments as we can. Um, as our budget allows, as the dates allow us to play. But the main thing is just seeing if we can get these kids back. Uh, fortunately, our number one, two, and three from last season, they're all still here. So we don't have to worry about them getting back. Uh, technically, I have six players right now. So if nobody can come back the rest of the year, we do have six players. We can field a team. Um, I might be recruiting you, Jameson, or, uh, or somebody else to come join our team. I wish you luck if that happened. <laughs> um, but I might be walking around campus, get recruiting some girls from the club team, or you know, you just adapt and, and you go from there. But uh, I'm pretty confident that this, the whole world's going to figure out this virus, and we're going to conquer it soon. If not, we'll, we'll figure it out. So as you were kind of harping on there, the NCAA has already cut back scheduling from 25 to you know, matches max down to 17. How, how do you see that affecting your scheduling? You know. Obviously, some of these northern schools aren't going to really be able to come down here to be some of those early season matches. You know, are you going to schedule strictly SSC? Where do you see this laying out? It's tough. I mean, just like all the coaches, we had, um, you know, we had our 25 dates set between the fall tournaments and the spring schedule. Uh, we were going to go out to the IT National Indoors. It's uh, that's three matches out there. Um, so. You know, right away, it's nine matches alone with our SSC. So we're very fortunate here. Um, it was tough to cut out teams, but we're, we're so fortunate because there's so many top ranked teams in the country in our conference that we still get to play one of, if not the toughest schedule in the country. Um, Barry's 25 minutes down the road. They're number one in the country. Lynn's a half hour away. They're number two in the country. St. Leo's in our conference. I think right now they're number eight or number nine in the country. Uh, we're number three in the country. Florida Southern is top 15, I believe. Um, and then we got some teams in Florida too. Uh, all the teams in SSC are solid. And then we have Flagler College, who's not in our conference or even in our region, which is uh, surprising. But that's another great team that's on our schedule. So we're able to, to really stay within the state. Um, the furthest that we're going to go is Valdosta. We're, we're fortunate. Valdosta is good every year. We're going to play um, University of North Georgia also. Um, and we're going to double up on them. We're going to play both of them the same day. Um, we're lucky that we have 10 good players on our team, so we'll be able to get everybody uh, playing time because it's tough to play two good teams like in one day. But there's a few matches, a few days, that we're going to double up and we're playing two different teams. But we have so much depth on our team. I I'm not really worried about that, and, I and I'm hoping this is just going to be for a year and we'll, uh, and we'll figure it out. But again, we're just so fortunate to have all these great teams here. So, pretty lucky. Then, obviously, across the board financially, you know, college sports has taken a massive hit. 
But this being the final question before we let you go, just some um, touch on recruiting and how you're able to kind of ensure take a positive side of things and, and making sure that these student athletes are still able to have that full college experience, you know, and, and really take everything in and have something to take with them into their future, into their post tennis careers. Yeah. Again, uh, just being down here in this area, in this region, it really helps with the overall experience for these kids. Um, budgets are being cut everywhere across the entire country. So, you know, we might just have to scale back and travel a little more local, but those trips are going to be awesome. These kids always remember these trips and we're still going to be able to travel within our state. We play so many good teams. And, you know, that's when these kids graduate, they hardly remember the wins and the losses. They remember the trips together, the funny stories, the funny jokes at dinner, something, you know, things that happen. So these kids are going to have a great experience and, and we'll, we'll still be able to have a strong program and we're just going to work hard and have fun. Of course. And it's always you, it's fun, though. You know, you guys have been doing a great job. So hopefully you get to see you back on the court soon. But I appreciate you jumping on here with us today. All right. Thanks, James. And I appreciate it, man. Hopefully I get to see you soon.